Hey guys, Tim B here. Just a quick video about my Keithley 197A I just picked up on eBay for $85. Just got in today, just pulled it out of the box. Um, coincidentally, my uh, DMM check from VoltageStandard.com also came in today. So I decided, uh, you know, hook it up and uh, see what's up here. Out of the box, this unit is... Let's see, three counts off. Um, on this range, this should be 10.0050K, uh, and we're at 10.0047K. So um, uh, <laughs> I think that's acceptable uh, given the... Uh, actual accuracy, stated accuracy of this unit. Um, voltage is actually spot on. Um, if you want to see something kind of kind of impressive, uh, let's see here. Throw it in auto voltage range, throw that on. Yeah, one thing about this unit is it actually is um, uh, four wire compatible for resistance measurements, which is, is you know, pretty good, especially considering you can normally pick these up on eBay for $100, $150 or so. Alright, let's put it in voltage mode. Here we go. Oh, wait, that's milliamps. My bad. Alright. Here we go. Once it settles... Boom, there we go. 5.0002. Now, a sheet that comes with the meter here. I don't know if that's going to show up or not. There we go. 5.000. Earlier, uh, before it had warmed up, um, it was actually giving me that spot on. Um, I don't know if it's just, uh, you know, warmed up and it's. Uh, it's a little outside that range, or or what? Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, there we go. Actually, uh, I actually rather like this little um, this little uh, DMM check. Uh, as far as uh, transfer standards go, it's uh, it's pretty nice. All right, there we go. Yeah. So uh, so that's a pretty impressive little uh, yeah little unit. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. There we go. Um, I think these cost about fifty dollars. You get voltage, um, you get current, and then you get three different resistances. You get a uh, hundred k, ten k, and one k, and uh, they're done in series. So you know you can combine them in different ways to get uh, to get different um, resistances. Uh, it comes with a nine volt battery. Um, I like how they mount the 9-volt battery on the bottom, so it actually, you know, you can see it uh, sitting down here. It actually, uh, it actually gives it a little bit of, uh, of weight so that it doesn't, you know, get knocked over by the leads quite as easily. Because that's one thing that I really, really hate. Um, you know, you get uh, something that comes on, a, on, a, on just a, a board only. Um, and, you know, you're meant to hook leads up to it and use it out of a case, but, you know, it's just, it's flying all around your, you know, your desk, um, and this doesn't. It's got the, the battery on there, so it just kind of, you know, it stays put. Um, incidentally, and I know I'm getting off track here, but incidentally, that is one reason that I really like um, TA's evaluation modules, uh, because they come with rubber feet all the way, you know, already on the bottom, because that's something that I will always do. I'll either put standoffs, uh, you know, on the board or put 
uh, rubber feet, which you can get these on, you know, Amazon for, for nothing, but it is nice, you know, and that way the board, uh, the board just kind of stays put, so, um, that is my biggest gripe with the, uh, and I don't know if I can find it now, I don't know what I did with them, oh, here we go, that's, uh, that's incidentally my, uh, my biggest gripe with the bus pirate. I love it. This thing is a a work of art as far as debugging goes, but they just give you the board and it's just it's all over the place, you know? So I clipped some plastic standoffs on mine, which is nice, but it still gets pulled everywhere, you know, when you when you put the leads on it. I mean, look at this. You know, you get your leads going there, and then you're trying to hook it up, and this is just, it's going everywhere, and it's just, no. Seriously, put your stuff in, you know, acrylic cases, or give it some sort of weight. Give me something to hook it to. I mean, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going off traffic, uh, 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 topic. We're talking about the, uh, the Keithley here, so... Um, yeah, out of, like I said, out of the box, um, it's just, it's great, and I mean, this has got to be over 20 years old, um, I mean, you know, easily, it's, well, probably older than that, I mean, uh, the 197, the non-A model of, uh, of this, and should probably switch back up here, there we go, the, uh, the non-A model of this, uh, was early 80s. Now I haven't cracked it open. I'm going to do that uh, in the next video on this. Um, we're going to crack it open. We're going to go and we're going to take a look inside. Uh, this particular model uh, that I've got here did come with uh, the GPIB option installed. Um, so I uh, I might pick up a GPIB USB adapter and um, and see if we can get it you know hooked up. Uh, on my little uh, network with the rest of my uh, with my gear here so that would be that would be you know outstanding um, incidentally incidentally uh, this Keithley you know 197A that I paid $85 for out of the box this has better calibration than my Tektronix DMM4020 which is like a you know sub thousand dollar unit so and that's something else too the the Tektronix DMM 4020 you know look all all of my other gear here came with calibration certificates that calibration certificate that calibration certificate that calibration certificate that the multimeter the one thing that I really need a calibration certificate for the most no calibration certificate. So, thanks, Tektronix. Although, I, I can't really complain too much because they did send me all the gear for free. So, you know, I'll pay a $100 calibration fee and get it calibrated. But it's just sort of annoying, you know. The multimeter, the one thing you really want the calibration on other than the scope. Sorry. Um, okay, so, back to the Keithley. Sorry about this. Uh, great, you know, spot on, on the voltage there, um, resistance, you know, even more spot on, um, let's try, let's try milliamps, uh, okay, plus right there, and I do have to, uh, say that the, the DMM check board here, um, I really love those those big uh, those big loops they included. That's that's very nice. You can get you know alligator clamps in there actually, which is amazing. All right. Okay. There we go. Okay. So we're getting one point zero zero zero. Five one milliamps, and on the sheet now, uh, that's actually uh, tested as point zero 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 two milliamps. So, yeah, 
that's uh, it's a bit off. Um, I think that's actually still technically within spec. Um, that's something I'm going to have to go in and, and probably calibrate myself. Um, that won't be too big of a deal. And, and, and I'll do that in the next video when I open the whole thing up. Uh, let's see. Um, like I said, the resistance is good. It just, it seems to be, you know, for, for as old as it is, it seems to be spot on. Now, there was a sticker here uh, on the top that the seller, I, I guess he tried to use isopropyl alcohol or something, and uh, as you can probably see here, he literally, uh, yeah, didn't do a very good job getting the writing off, but he also took all the text on that sticker off. Um, and he also took the, the text on, uh, or that entire sticker off there, and that looked like uh, some sort of foil sticker. So I suspect that that was probably a calibration seal of some sort, uh, or just a calibration reminder maybe, that uh, he took off. So uh, thanks, random seller. Uh, the seller that I got this from, actually, um, I believe this seller doesn't normally sell electronics and that sort of thing, so uh, maybe they didn't, you know, know any better. Um, I don't know. Either way, really, really happy with this purchase, $85, and you've got a, a, a multimeter here that is rivaling, you know, uh, you know, thousand dollar meters um, and something to keep in mind too about this is that you know uh, when I'm measuring voltage on it I was doing five volts this is really really designed and it really shines when measuring uh, microvolts and below um, that's what it was really designed for and in its day I mean this was like the Cadillac of you know microvolt meters um, the 197A's are a little bit harder to pick up on eBay the 197's uh, you do see them um, you've got to watch out because they don't often have problems but when they do they are big problems um, here, I'll, I'll go ahead and, uh, unhook this and just kind of, uh, tour you around the, the meter real quick, unplug it, you know, show you what's up on it. Um, yeah, they don't normally have, uh, uh, problems, but when they do, they're generally major problems. Um, over at the EV blog forums, there's actually a thread about, uh, the 197 version of these, and, I mean, the guy has been working at it for weeks and he just cannot get it working um, one of the things to look for in the eBay auctions is um, you know check the pictures or ask the seller to plug it in and uh, you know put it on voltage mode and uh, you know auto range mode works fine generally make sure that a voltage is showing up on here even if it's just you know noise if it shows ol overload um you want to watch out because that's indicative of a uh, of a problem so uh we got a nice uh uh tilting bale here um it is to be honest with you it is a little bit uh uh flimsy it's kind of cheap and uh you know plasticky feeling there um yeah, uh, not a huge fan of that, but it does function. Um, yeah, all right. So let's uh, let's give you a little overview here. Um, on the uh, on the front side, uh, you got uh, you've got a nice display. Um, one thing to keep in mind about this display is it uh, it does tend to generally need direct viewing. It is an older liquid crystal display, so if you're not looking at it head-on, it's going to be quite faded. Um, it's got a 100-point uh, memory for data logging, 
um, sketch your relative function, um, it can measure uh, noise in signals, um, uh, like I said you can recall and store on the data logger there, uh, you got your ACDC push button, um, and that's actually like you know a little switch just moves between the two and uh, like you know if you are in uh, let's say uh, resistance mode there and you've got the AC switch pushed in it will let you know on there to flash AC and, and, and the ohm symbol so uh, that's uh, that's rather nice um, so yeah you've got voltage you've got ohms and you've got amperage um, you have uh, 200 millivolts, um, 200 ohms, and uh, 200 uh, microamps. You've got a milliamps range, uh, 2 milliamps, 20 milliamp, um, 200 milliamp, 2000 milliamp, and a 10 amp range over at the end there. Uh, this you've got your 200 ohm, 2K, 20K, 200K, mega ohm and an auto ranging mode. Uh, voltage, same thing. Um, you go down to uh, your micro volts there. And this is all volts and then you've got an auto volt. Um, over here we've got uh, um, you know your, your resistance sense inputs and uh, Kelvin. Um, and then your regular inputs, and then a separate uh, fuse 10 amp um, input there. And then this is your milliamp fuse over here, good for up to 2 amps. So, all right, and then we switch this around to the back. Let me move the bale there. All right. So, uh, yeah, on the back here, we've got. Um, your normal IEC power connector. Um, over here you can go between uh, 210, 250 and 105, 125 with that switch. Now this is interesting. This is your calibration switch. Um, it should normally be in the disabled position over to where my finger is. Uh, flop it over the other way and uh, that enables calibration. Uh, this turns on and off the backlight. Um, these are analog outputs. Um, I have not gone in depth with that in the manual, uh, but I assume this is uh, some sort of voltage output that, um, that scales with whatever input you're measuring. Um, this is for your uh, your GPIB um, or IEEE 488 interface uh, address selection and that is the connector right there. Um, yeah, not much to it. And then I thought this was kind of nice because this is such a lightweight uh, meter and it did have a, uh, a uh, portable option uh, where you could have a battery pack on the inside. And we're actually going to look into that. Um, when we open this up in the next video, I'm going to look into kind of, um, you know, creating a battery pack for it. Um, you know, you've only got like five hours with the old uh, battle, uh, battery pack, and I'm sure that was, you know, uh, uh, nickel cadmium, you know, NICAD batteries. So I'm sure we can do a lot better with, uh, <laughs> with um, you know, lithium ion or even lithium polymer batteries these days. Um, so yeah, you've just basically got uh, like a quick reference guide. Um, they call it the condensed operating instructions, which makes me think of condensed soup or something. I don't know. Uh, they could have just called it quick reference, but um, it shows you down here how to use the data logger. Um, you've actually got accuracy uh, specifications. Um, you know, uh, DC voltage range, it's one gig ohm in impedance, which is, you know, something that you'd expect, um, just, you know, general how to use. So I thought that was kind of nice, um, especially, you know, as light as this meter is. Considering how old that it is, um, I was really impressed by the lightweight. I mean, especially, you know, considering the, the accuracy. So, um... 
yeah, I've, I've got to say that that, you know, that, that is quite nice. Um, yeah, so that's, you know, this is supposed to be a quick video, but 20 minutes in, what, what are you going to do? Um, yeah, and like I said, you can put the tilting bale up like that, so you kind of get a, uh, you know, a little bit of carry handle going there. Um, like I, like I said, though, it is very, very flimsy, um, but then again, this is not very heavy, so, you know, who cares? Um, yeah, uh, next video, we'll, uh, we'll crack it open and, uh, and see what's inside of her. Um, so, yeah, that's a, uh, that's a, a video of the, uh, Keithley 197A Auto Ranging Microvolt DMM, um, Thanks for watching, and if you got any questions, uh, post them below.